All right, uh, very moment welcome. I'm Shravan Tadapala, PhD candidate at Jackson Street Park. Uh, and my talk is going to be about uh, manufacturing process called sheet metal forming and it's contextualized in the automotive domain. And I'm looking at how can we make use of sensor data and simulations to help improve the understanding and performance of these processes. It's contextualized around the concept of industry 4.0. So having that in the background. Okay, why should you care about this? Well, if you or your industry is, say, trying to understand the cause effect relationships between product process variables or variables in the system, or if you're trying to improve your prediction accuracy, or say, make use of data that's generated from experiments or from sensors that you get, trying to have that help your development stages. Or in general, if you as a researcher is trying to understand how your research can be contextualized into the upcoming concepts industry 4.0 digital twins, then there's probably something that you can gain from uh, this research. Uh, and this research relates to the research factory, which is simulation-driven design. The main stakeholder was Volvo Cars, and we had other companies as well. And if I get then into the case studies directly, so we looked at the manufacturing process of the front door inner of Volvo XC90 and Volvo XC60. Um, why these parts? Because they are quite intricate, one of the complicated sheet metal parts uh, designs, and they have they face issues during manufacturing and production. And then the research try to understand what are these issues, both manufact during manufacturing and development stages, and how can we build develop methods, tools, and approaches to help some of these uh, issues. So what is sheet metal forming? Well, it is a manufacturing process where a sheet metal is placed between two tools and a punch comes and deforms it into desired shape. And this can happen in one step or more. And you typically have parts such as the body components of an automobile or even a kitchen sink produced during this process. It starts off with these sheet metal coils, uh, which are then fed into a cutting line to produce a sheet, a blank. And then these blanks are then fed into these press lines where you have several tools stacked progressively and they're quite huge. You see that's a human being standing there uh, to then produce the final part. And there are different operations involved during its production. Uh, we take XC60. It has operations such as drawing and uh, trimming, piercing, planning, and so forth. Uh, I actually have a video to show uh, from the major drawing step. So you have these the first step where you have sheet placed and it's the forming stages are going there. So this is for XC90. Now, when we went into manufacturing, we did a lot of production visits, discussions with the operators there, and we saw that there were issues. You had non-stationary conditions during manufacturing, so you had varying temperatures. When you start production versus after thousand strokes, variation in temperature, the material properties vary from different batches of coil. The oil amounts were different, thickness of sheets were different, surface properties were different. And this was influencing the output product quality. And it's quite tricky because it's a lot of variables. So it's not so evident how exactly it is influencing the quality. Then you have some complicated physics, mechanics happening in the process, such as large tool deformations. And you also have dynamic frictions and material nonlinearities, which also then plays into influencing the output product quality. So, some of the common issues that we saw at times is that we had fractures, spring back, uh, wrinkles. And then today, if you look at the manufacturing process, 
you have either visual inspection at the end, the output station, or you take a few parts from the output station to an inspection station where you conduct some measurements. And this can be quite costly since it takes a lot of time. And the way you solve the issues today is you, you hold the process, you try to find different settings that can help solve this issue because there's not a lot you can do with design at that stage. Extreme cases, you have to basically alter the surfaces of the tool to achieve your desired path specifications. So as you can imagine, it's costly uh, and time-taking process. We do have some sensors collecting data from the process, uh, but they are today used for monitoring purposes, for flagging if, there are, if the variable values exceed the threshold limits and so forth. Likewise, in the design stages, uh, now this is an overview of the product development process at VCBC, not getting to the details of it. I, we spoke with the engineers from different departments on how they go about doing their uh, duties there. So generate challenges such as you have increased demands, so you customers need more features in their cars. Uh, but there's only so much you can increase the size of a product so you end up developing complicated designs then stricter sustain sustainability requirements renders uh, quite new more sustainable material grades and this present a new set of challenges during um, during design again one another issue that's quite common is that you go through the product development engineering phases where you design virtually test and verify the design but when you come to say try out the production you see that there's a mismatch in the behaviors and this is quite interesting and quite challenging to understand and solve and that can then be tracked back to the simulations that we conducted during development as to what went wrong and what aspects were not accounted for? Uh, and is there something that we can help in, in there? So another quite uh, interesting uh, observation is that all the engineers see that there's some data related issues that can be reused during design are today not being used because there is a lack of methods, tools to be able to use these things. So the research then contributes with methods, tools, and approaches, uh, a, simula a simulation-based approach for exploring the cost-effect relationships between variables, uh, understanding industry 4.0, how it's, what's its role in design and in man manufacturing, then how can you integrate these sensor data into simulations of the proposed methodology there, and then understanding the barriers and opportunities, barriers to feedback of data to the de development stages, and what opportunities does it have in significant with industry 4.1 and so forth. And this has been then published in a few papers and also like in chip thesis. Okay, so some results. We're looking at uh, exploring the cause effect relationships. And this, the research asserts that this is quite essential to do. And this can be done in a systematic manner. And you essentially do that by, say, creating a simulation model with all the crucial elements uh, in the model, which is happening in reality. And how do you model these? Well, you make use of data from reality. And the research shows how can you. Uh, do that in this specific case. Then you validate this again using data from real real life. And once you have a valid, reliable model, you conduct design of experiments. You create a experimental study uh, to generate more data and extract those data into say meta models and make decision very quickly. Uh, then also looking at how sensor data, for example, we have this duplicate amount on sheets. How can this be processed and configured for use into simulations? And how can that be done in an automated fashion? Because it's a lot of data. Also, 
if you have data from say production, how can you use that to identify error prone regions when you're developing the next products? And then a proposal was also made in one of the journals on what are different ways you can use data from production uh, in this stage, development stage. And in the end, you also have the manufacturing process improvement uh, here framework from using how can you actively use data to uh, control your processes in a feedback loop and predict issues before they occur. This also then links quite well with the with the idea of in the past you used to restrict designs to meet your manufacturing constraints. Today you're trying to explore new designs to exploit the possibilities, flexibility of manufacturing. So it links quite well with digital thread and twin concepts. And yeah, so you guys can find my research in that barcode and also have a uh, poster down there if you have questions. Thank you.